Schwarz, Mann. <laughs> but I tried to be like, um, I tried to be like Mike. Yeah. <laughs> And had to mute Jelly Roll there um, because uh, the uh, <laughs> and and that's another Shine Down video. I I tried to play Get Up um, by uh, Shine Down the music video. Uh, it's a great video. I um, I listen to Shine Down quite a bit among my other groups, Five Finger Death Punch. Um, uh, disturbed uh, i mean the list of the band names is a little bit disturbing uh <laughs> to people sometimes um i guess but um how's my how's my audio now for my microphone i know the animation it's probably not um that it's uh uh maybe not um uh, uh, and this is my um i i have my other wireless mark mic charged up but i i have um i'm going through and using my um okay i'm just reading youtube messages too um that i'm using my anchor wireless headset because i have effectively a, a cough switch with this that I can go through and just raise the boom up. And that goes through and it tells me that my uh, that my mic is is muted. And um it didn't tell me it didn't tell me unmuted when I popped it back down, but maybe I didn't give it a chance. And um Okay, and I was playing it. I mean, I, I, I've got so much source, so many sources feeding into OBS here. Uh, it just, um, it's unmanageable. Um, and I try and go through and I try and mute everything else audio source wise um, for, um, you know, so I can control at least what what is coming over the, the microphone. And I think I'm doing good because I just have the wireless mic for this for this source, and um, and I actually need to work with that intro, the the IBM screensaver, and that was labeled as a Windows 95 screensaver, although it of course works in a bunch of places. Uh, I actually have that on my uh, among other places. I've got that on my xp pro uh system that i've got fired up i've got it actually as a, a different source and i can probably flip over to that just for a moment and it's funny because the audio from that 
is actually the sound test for the for the sound max um system and the segment that i have recorded i went through and tried to edit it in um in davinci resolve and um it's only like a minute long and it i tried to get it where they they stop in place and that doing the cutaway so the i could extend a minute segment i could just go through and run it you know continuously and it looked like it was um the loop for it wouldn't be evident and i i didn't get it well enough i need to go for a longer segment i actually have a longer segment recorded so I tried to get at the transition that it's doing that right now. And the IBM showing and then the V going across and swiping. Um, I tried to get that uh, set up and I can't. Um, so the, uh, well, I, I, I haven't yet set that up. I, I will go through and get that set up. Um, but um, it just, I've got to get the time and everything else. And th this morning, I wasn't quite as rushed. And even for this live stream, guys, this is, uh, uh, of course, delayed a day. I normally do it on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. my local time, Mountain Standard Time. And, um, Okay, audio could be a little higher. My microphone now, is it doing fine for everyone or is it? Um, so, I, of course, I lost track of a day with Christmas on end. I wouldn't have done a stream at 10 in the morning yesterday for being Christmas. I'm not going to detract from. Um, yeah, and I've got to go through, and in particular, the audio source. Uh, or audio sources on my coming soon screen, my theme, my scene in OBS, where you can control the scenes. And that's where I have a scene of coming soon with the, the screensaver and the music. And um, I probably even need to have those components and set up a loop otherwise. And, and Mike, I struggled with a countdown timer. Um, I know that there's plugins out there for people and I've um I I, I just can't uh, I don't know. I, I mean and OBS anyway, for someone that's not familiar with the OBS software for doing this stuff, uh for streaming, for recording, everything else. And it's my main interface in the recording side because I don't typically edit my videos at all. I I mean I never I realize my production level is pretty low. Um, I just normally go through and pause OBS, I mean the recording software. I don't go through and edit edit in DaVinci Resolve um, or DaVinci Resolve. I don't want to put a uh, mispronounce that. But um, in OBS, it's it, you know it's a free software, and people say, well, you get what you pay for, and um, if word to the wise, if you go through and install OBS and get it right on your system, don't try to upgrade it. Don't try and mess with things. Um, I've actually delayed upgrading. I probably should go through and try on another machine. I, I want to ultimately go and I'll, I'll replace this recording machine um, just to get a better setup. But um it's funny, I'm so far behind now on, on the releases for OBS because once you get a working wor version, you leave it in place because you, you try and upgrade and you're going to upset the Apple cart. Um, yeah, I I need to go through and I have enough of a time to where I get into uh, the studio early that I could probably even do, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the times before I start streaming that I could probably even do a video, edit a video, a 15 mi minute video if I wanted to, um, and be able to seek to the time of, um, before the, I go live on the stream and do it, just do it myself and have it as a scene 
and an animation that I can play myself, uh, not even in a loop, just a, a going through a countdown timer, having some sort of animation. But that's going to be, you know, some fancy uh, development. Um, yeah, there's better options out there. Um, and OBS for all that, I mean, for being free and for being... Um, uh, you know, just being available, and there's people, there's lots of people that use it. I might go through and bring down my shine down for jelly roll that video, and I can actually, I'll go through and uh, hide that away. And I've got my screens relatively well organized. I'm actually going to put my OBS up on my top screen just to really get it out of the way otherwise of and so I can see that real good if I look up um, and I've got my chat window and everything else um, the YouTube side over here to my left um, going through I've got my links to the right and let's go through what else do I want up? And I'm I actually just finished up my morning. I went through and looked at my mail, my email, and uh, I've Lewis Olin's talking about a lighted keyboard. I really haven't thrown into that. I haven't seen that if that was addressed to me or both me and Tom, maybe, or maybe some others as well. And it's, I think he's talking about the lighted keypad for for um, the IBM had for like their CAD machines and stuff like that, or whatever, um, RS-6000. Uh, and I was gonna look through and maybe took a, take a look at the link that he, uh, that he offered, because Lewis is, is neat because he goes through and he um, he digs around uh, for stuff. Yeah, for to it's to Thomas and to me. And I'll look at that later on. Um, he he goes through and he digs, of course, and he's done a lot of the content as it was anyway. And um the in fact let me get uh get the link out there uh with this background. Now, I wanna I wanna talk about the the background behind me here in just a moment too. And we'll get looking at things to kind of be on on topic in a way. Um, I did plan, and not that I need to really bring up any more topics. I need to really actually go through and um, to get um, a lot of topics further along with them or get them a little bit more wrapped up as it is and uh, and not bring in more. And I, you know, uh, even for my schedule, trying to do videos every day and that's a hard schedule to keep sometime and this this place is a is absolute wreck i had stuff out for organizing in all my the packing materials all the bubble wrap all the noodles and everything else and i was had that outside taking advantage of the nice weather and then the wind kicked up and it just blew the stuff all just all over and so i had to go around and collect all the and i threw it inside and of course, I made a worse mess than what I had before. And um, in this area too, I'm in a very rural setting. And my studio is on top of um, a bunker that my dad built back in the day. And I, I don't mean a nuclear bunker or anything else, just a, something, a, a storage area. And his local business, he when they retired, um, he paid a lot of money for doing the underneath the storage area and everything else and putting this on kind of the hillside, but there's rats um, in this area. And it's in particular with the, uh, the land and my, uh, my mom now, because my dad passed about a year and a half ago, a little bit more a year and three quarters um, ago. And that it's, they have she has two acres and the lower acre is just it's wood it's undeveloped um 
my dad was going to set up his writing trains on that at, at one point and just didn't get have the energy to do it. Um, and it, it's just rats. If you have a, a, I have a van store down there and you have the hood closed and the rats just pack all inside with, with the wood <laughs> of that, um, that they go through and collect all the pack rats and they just nest and I'm getting the bucket traps for them and everything else. I'm just going to start killing rats. I'm not, I'm, um, normally I'm a really passive person. I don't, I don't kill things. I don't go through and, um, for the, you know, the rats, if I had, you know, in a different world, I'd take the rats and take them out in the woods somewhere and let them go. Um, just because, and there's enough rats out there in the wood too. Um, I'm not going through and improving their lives. I'm not going to take them a short distance and make them somebody else's problem. And they've irritated me enough of where they've nested and everything else that I'm going to go through. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm going to deal with them here and not and not take them elsewhere. I'm going to go through. I'm going to. Let's actually get rid of that browser source. Let's get that one in. And let's even display that. And let's go through and interact with that. Okay. And with my, and maybe I had to move my OBS I'm glad that the um, interaction window showed up real easy. I'm going to move that down actually lower so I can go through and deal with it here. And we can do, yeah, the interact here. And so, of course, this is our tool uh, site. And that's the link I provided earlier. And, um, the um so a lot of this content is uh uxw bill on youtube this is uh william walsh's uh content that came up with the a lot of the eduquest material here and um so i'm i'm grateful for all of that uh it needs to go through to where it needs to be expanded a little bit more um, let me get, I want to get this, you know, I'm chasing my own tail again. Okay, there we go. Did we? Come on, work with me. Okay, that's good. Oh, it could be better. Okay. That's probably... Let's get this off to the side. And I could even get back. Yeah, if I'm I'm not scaring anything. So this is the main EduQuest page that I that I gave a link for before. And um it's got the different models there. Um Tom goes through and he organizes his pages really, really well. In fact, I need to look at some of the things like the common devices. We'll get to the materials I have behind me in just a moment. And we're just about, at this point, we're coming up on uh, being a third of the way through the live stream I like to do, about about an hour. So we're... Um, so, and people say the links to the Model 25. Um, they say model 25 on steroids. And um, that was the question that was put to um, the chat window. And so I'm just telling people the initial PS2 release in April of 1987 was the, um, it was the PS2 model 30. It was the PS2 model, seven, uh, model 50 the PS2 Model 60, 
and both the Model 50 and 60 being microchannel and based on the 286 CPU. And the Model 50 does not have an extended CMOS. It only has four slots. And it does fine with that. And it is, a, you know, it's, it's a working microchannel. Just is a little bit more stripped down for some of the things on there. And, of course, the Model 60 being um, eight slots of microchannel has to go through and have an extended CMOS to it. And then there was the Model 70, which is a, the 3 to 6 level, and initially came out in the uh, the 16 megahertz uh, level. The Model 80, and I had always thought that the Model 80 was released because they did the, the 50 and 60 were the desktop and tower version of the 286. The Model 70 and Model 80 being the desktop and tower version of the 386. Now, the Model 80 wasn't quite ready at the time of the PS2 introduction in April 1987. And remember that also that IBM was, uh, and part of the naming for PS2s was that they were releasing OS2 at the same time, the operating system, OS2. And uh, they were having the big thing with Microsoft and everything else and trying to come out with a, a graphical user environment, uh, ultimately, you know. Um, and um, OS2 was even a little bit delayed. They had to go through and, um, you know, it was it took a few months after that before really OS2 and the Model 80 kind of came out and were announced a little bit better. Uh, so they, they had internal delays. Now, the Model 30 was the only non-microchannel or 8-bit system. It had the MCGA graphics, too, kind of stripped down, not uh, fully the VGA side. And really, my belief is that the... Um, IBM contracted out, and there's, of course, the full chipset on the, the Mall 30 is the uh, Seiko Epson Japan logo on those chips. And I think IBM had somebody else do it, and the case is a little bit larger. The power supply is different from what it later ended up to be. Um, and so I think uh, that the case is... The, they wanted a smaller case. They wanted the Mull 3026 case that it should have been in. And I almost even thought that they would have put the Mull 25 planer in the Mull 30 um, because it has all the right uh, places to connect up things. And um, the Mull 25 is was released later than the Mull 30. And it's all the same components otherwise, except for the integrated screen. Uh, and they, they shrunk down the planer for all that. The only thing the MOL 25 doesn't have that the initial MOL 30 does, and we're talking about, remember, we're talking about based on the 8086 CPU, is it doesn't have a real-time clock chip module. Um, and... Um, Really, in the environment like I have for my Model 25s, I have that um, I-Class. And Sean knows a little bit about um, the I-Class side and everything else for what he's done. Um, going through the real-time clock chip on the Model 25 doesn't matter because if you boot over the network, you get the time from the server anyway. And we'll look at how my EduQuest are set up. My EduQuest are... Uh, I have them in the same, I received them in the same lot that I got along my Mall 25s. And um, they were all set up as part of the system, the I-Class system that my local school had, my local school district. They're taking them out of service or took them out of service and replaced them. And this is the, um, this is ultimately about, probably be about 20 years ago. Maybe even a little bit more. Uh, it was a blind auction, and um, 
I knew for a fact that nobody else would be bidding on it, but I, I just put in a little bit extra and I think I did $300 for the lot or something like that. And I didn't have any competition, won the auction. I think they started it at 200 or 250 or something like that, or it was open-ended where you could bid whatever you wanted, but it was the highest, it was silent auction. It was a closed bid um, to where you just had to anticipate. And of course I didn't have any, any collectors around the area. I didn't have any salvage people that were around in the area at that time, luckily. And I bid $300 and my dad and I went down and collected it and, and, um, for the most part, a lot of those systems, I did check them out initially, but I, I've stored them away in a lot of cases. And I'll get to the EduQuest um, here in a moment, but it's basically a Model 25 that's treated as being on steroids. Um, the Model 25 came out initially in the, and I think it was released in, 1988 um which is really late for uh, ultimately for an 8086 based um ps2 anyway and um the the mall 25 case is rather small it's funny that there's a carry case for those things with wheels that you could you could have it as luggage and little pockets for the keyboard and the mouse and you could wheel you could wheel these, uh, you know, this carry case. That was the traveling computer, as it were, uh, for that era of the late 80s. And, um, but, yeah, the 8086-based um, unit at that time frame in 1988-89, uh, when the 46 CPUs were starting to come out and the 386DX really kind of dominated the market the clone wars were going on um a, a few years later in the early 90s and that's when it was really undercutting all the computer prices out there and everything else uh their little fly-by-night companies are saying up in strip malls that had their own version of a 46 um motherboard just a sheet motherboard that they could drop into something and a case that would go through and cut you up and everything else and stamped out. Um yeah, the the but yeah the model 25 that boots the die class. And I'll get a little bit touch on a little bit on that because the EduQuest I as I say I, it's from my local school system. The I class server I've had out here before was a another unit I picked up later on. The model 85 that I have around uh, was a different iClass server. And that's actually, I even have the adapters for that and what a side topic that I can get on as well. Um, but these EduQuest are, are from that school lot. And it was most of the units, the Model 25 units were the 8086 based versions. There's a couple, um, 25 286 units that were in that lot and then i there weren't any of the 25 sx units and i have a few of those i picked up later on um and of course the 25 sx that was the in line for the uh the mall 25 they had planned to put the the same planer into the mall 30 case and make it a ps2 30 sx and there's actually even uh, ibm documentation out there of the particularly the bios versions that they talk about a mall ps2 mall 30 sx and they um yeah and so and that's uh, sean brought up another uh, point of the mall 25 so the mall 25 when it initially came out the 8086 version it was the only mall 25 at that um ever after that that had the monochrome or color version the the initial 8086 based mall 25 
you could ha get as monochrome. And I've got a very good friend that has a got a monochrome model 25 early on. And of course, that's just a CRT that was in the unit um, that could go through and uh, do ultimately grayscale or um, I mean, it is a, a advertised as a monochrome. And you look at the badge of the Mall 25 for that level and um, the the color version, the color CRT had the three color dots. The monochrome version, of course, did not. Now, when they got to the Mall 26, it was all color screens at that point. Uh, that they didn't have those with a monochrome screen. Even though you can retrofit, you can change the screens around. You can come up with a monochrome version of the of the 2526 or the or the 25SX. But it wasn't, those were sold as color units. The Mall 25SX was a, a limited release uh, that seemed like it was marketed kind of towards the schools in a way. Um, and it's funny, I have a, I even have a cup somewhere around that talks about they marketed the 25, Mall 25 as the all night fighter on this coffee cup. And they talked about it being good for playing games and everything else. And I don't know if that was the 25SX or if that was the earlier versions they were talking about. But they're talking about university students basically having that unit. Now, the 30, kind of my getting back in my rambling discussion, the 30SX, and that was the same planer as the 25SX had, um, they had gone through, IBM did a, a video chip with uh, Texas Instruments that was in there. It was really nice. Um, you could um, have more VRAM on there and have a nice, ultimately a DOS gaming system that you could set up uh, really nice. But IBM had plans for the 35SX, and Sean talked about his unit. that He has the 35SX and then the larger 40SX. Now, the 35SX um, is a 20 megahertz 386SX CPU, and um, it's in what they call a three by three case, three adapter slots, three drive bays. And the concept of drive bays on that is still a little bit open because for that case style, um, typically the third bay, as they referred to it, was actually a, um, support that, that bridged across from the PSU to the adapter riser, um, that held an internal hard drive. And then you had, of course, your top bay on the front was for your diskette drive. And, um, then the lower bay, uh, was for a CD-ROM if you had it, or, on the lower end units, they put the hard drive in there, the three and a half inch hard drive on a an a, adapter bracket for that bay, because that was a five and a quarter bay. And um, but that was the three by three model uh for the 35SX. And that K style, that three by three style was called the space saver. Um because it was smaller than a desktop. The 40SX was the same planer in it, but it was in the 5x5 five five case. Five adapter slots, ISA, of course, um, because every PS2 model below 50 is not microchannel. It's ISA, uh, typically, or other adapters from the ISA side. Even the laptop side, the notebook side, below the model 50 is, is not a microchannel unit because Microchannel requires a whole structure of how the the motherboard is designed on those to support microchannel and the slot enumerations, adapter enumerations, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, correct. the 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 planer was no different, and so the Mall Twenty Five was at the eighty eighty six version was released of uh, the planer, and it has. And if I were more organized and I could get around my studio, and don't worry, I'm going through and getting the um, 
the setup for a bigger studio that I would have. Um, and I'll have that where I can move around a little bit more. I could grab one of those planers if I were, you know, more organized and could get around my studio a little bit more. But the power connection for that initial Model 25 planer was towards the edge. And that is what, of course, is referred to as a Type 1 planer. IBM always has these Type 1, Type 2, Type 3. If they get into the mall, uh, just as the revisions to the planers. Um, and the Mall 25 actually has a, a an EC notice out there, engineering change notice, that the MCGA video could have problems. And that was when it was two separate chips. It was the uh, the gate array um, and um, it was in two chips. It wasn't in a single unified chip, uh, but that that Gatorade chip uh, had some issues. And so the IBM released an engineering change notice and for the Mall 25. And there was the Type 2 planer that the main visual difference to that is, besides the MCGA Gatorade being a different chip, um, is that that power connection has moved a little bit more inboard on the planer. And um, surprisingly, even though the same chipset is on the MOL 30, the initial MOL 30 planer, IBM did not release an engineering change announcement for, for it at all. And although they did come up with a different uh, planer for the MOL 30, and the MOL 30 as well, the reason I believe it was produced by another company uh, there's other things that I'll that'll feed into this discussion too, and I'm getting trapped on talking about PS2s, and I'll get eventually talking about the EdgeQuest stuff too. And we're a little bit past halfway through of the hour I normally allot for a live stream, but um, the the first Mall 30 planer is called the P planer. It has that labeling on the side of the planer. I even have some very early Mall 30 planers that normally IBM or other companies that work with IBM to do their PCBs. Normally, initial PCB from from IBM for their systems is a brown coloring. Uh, the 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 and it can go through, and you can see evidence of it being an earlier planer, bodge wires and things like that. Um, the later planers are typically the green color. And um, so I have some early Mall 30 planers that are brown. They have writing on the bottom, even date codes um, below the initial uh, previous to the, the PS2 release. I even have one that's marked, I think, as far as like mid- 1986 uh, for the, the date on the underside of that, penned in by hand. And the other thing that IBM did with their planers too is the initial releases, in particular for the PS2s, introducing VGA. You know, VGA came in with uh, the PS2 line, is that IBM used the ceramic. Ramdex, and that's what uh, the chip that converts the digital signals to an analog or VGA, and um, VGA being an analog uh, display, your your color scheme is all uh, you know it's all amplitude levels um, for the VGA. You have different color lines different from the earlier systems that that IBM had that were digital um, color schemes, just for the ability to go through and more um, uh, variety of colors or, you know, to expand. Uh, that's where the market was going, was these analog uh, 
uh, display uh, abilities. And so IBM would release a planer and have a ceramic RAM deck initially on the bottle and later on would convert to a plastic RAM deck, plastic housed. And um, you'll even see some, some planers that as they transitioned from that, they'll have uh, clamping diodes that are soldered on the legs of the plastic ram deck to basically help it be a little bit better or adapt from the, the earlier ceramic ram deck. But, um, you know, I've, I've got so much of the discussion kind of going on. Um, I was talking about the MAL-30, the initial planer of the MAL-30 being the P-planer, not identified as a type one or anything like that, the normal IBM nomenclature that you would normally see, it had identified of, of being a, a P planer. And then there's evidence of the uh, some another replacement planer being issued, and it's referred to around as the Grenick uh, planer for the uh, for the thought of the Grenick. Scotland plant that um, that built it, and it's not labeled on the the planer at all or anything like that. The planer still is not identified as anything as type two. Uh, normally, you may see some IBM documentation that later on, just to re to reference it themselves, they went through and started using the type identifiers, but it's not as prevalent for the MOL thirty, and that's why I believe. That was produced for for by someone else for IBM. I think IBM was just tied down with producing microchannel models, and had somebody else do the ISA or the eight bit version. And the MAL thirty you, people have to remember when it came out for the ISA the eight bit side, IBM being the mainframe and mini computer that was their bread and butter. A lot of time the MAL thirty was designed to go through and have a terminal emulation board in there um, for 3270 for the mainframe terminal emulator or going through and having a 5250 emulator board in there um, to make them basically terminals that, that could be used with the mainframe or the mini computers, System 3X and AS, later on the AS400. Uh, the other angle to the 8-bit side was IBM developed also the four megabit token ring and those initial 8-bit boards uh, being in for that. And then they had a microchannel um, that they had companies out there that they supported that were networked together with token ring and very intricate and in involved networks for that time of token ring. And then token ring becoming the uh, going to the 16 megabit uh, standard as well later on, and even they have 8-bit adapters for that that are 16 megabit token ring boards. And um, but the the MAL 30, and also just a few years after that, there's the Epson Equity 1E, and that's a little e, Epson Equity 1E, and I've seen one of those online. Ancient Electronics is the site that has that. Um, they've had a page that's there. I want to find one of those units eventually because that is effectively a Model 30 clone that was released by Seiko Epson. By, and it was within a span of time, just right after the Model 30, that normally in the in the industry out there, if somebody would have cloned an IBM system, IBM had lawyers to go through and say, what are you doing producing a system that is identical to our unit or you know, um, has the same features as what we do? And I just believe that, uh, that Seiko Epson was released from their agreement after they designed them all 30 for IBM that the IBM told them or they they had the the time it's fire on the contract to where they could release their own model and the 
Epson Equity 1E is actually a uh, later, it, the chipsets and everything else that, that Seiko Epson did for it at that point are newer than uh, what was used on the MAL 30 and MAL 25. And um, so, you know, you see that it's a kind of a newer generation, but it, even being released after the MAL 30 for being based on the 8086 CPU still, and it has MCGA graphics, and it has, so the MCGA graphics are used in three places, the Model 25 planer, the Model 30 planer, or the Equity 1E planer. That's the only three places you find MCGA. You don't find it on an adapter anywhere. It's only on the planer. Um, and, you know, Epson for that level, why release a system that had just MCGA graphics? And I think a little bit was that it was also IBM viewed it as, well, you're releasing the Japanese market. And so that's fine. Now, Seiko Epson had um, the other interesting aside, and it's a real tangent to this conversation, is of all the chips that IBM produced for VGA, all the chips that they had on their systems for VGA, and there's only one IBM VGA adapter, um, all the other chips are on planers of the PS2 systems uh, for that VGA level. We're not talking about any later video standards or anything like that. For the VGA level on IBM systems, there's only one adapter that was made, and that's an 8-bit adapter, and it's designed to go in the MAL 30. It's designed, you can use it on the, the XT and on the AT to add VGA capabilities to those systems, but it fits very well in the MAL 30. Um, and that's has the IBM chip with the silver, the so-called silver cap chip. And I, if I, I could almost go through and by memory relate of what those, the FRU number is on those, on those ASIC chips that are for VGA. Uh, but that's the only one that is branded just purely as IBM that you can see originated from IBM. Um, and that, Silver cap chip is on other planers of PS2s, microtown planers. Uh, but they all the other VGA chips that IBM has on the planers otherwise have the Seiko Epson logo on those chips. So it's a really interesting thing. And now Tube Time US, he, he did go through and he delitted on Twitch. He's got a video, um, that's kind of his mechanism for doing streams like this, uh, rather than YouTube, he goes through and does it on Twitch. I need to go through and do live streams on Twitch too. Um, but he delitted an MCGA chip, in other words, from a MAL 25 level, and it does indeed on the inside, it has IBM labeling on that. So it who knows how Seiko Epson was involved in that. They did have a little bit of work with IBM after the PC convertible um, that uh, for the screen of the PC convertible. And there's three different versions. Um, IBM went through and they bought a, um, a, an LCD plant from Seiko Epson that was in the Far East. And it was mainly viewed as the, the screens for the PS55s uh, that were in the Japanese market, that some of those initial um, units had LCD screens a lot like the PC convertible did. But there's a lot of interaction to the, uh, to the, that Seiko Epson, Japan had with IBM that really I'm interested in in figuring out what the link is there because it could be very interesting. Now to the to the EduQuest, I mean we might as well get to the point uh, where 
we've expended a lot of the hour um, with me chatting away here. I'm surprised I haven't gone through and coughed or anything else. I haven't been um, picking up my energy drink or anything like that. Um, everybody appears to be comfortable um, uh, listening to me. <laughs> I'm seeing a little bit of the stuff in the in the uh the chat dialogue. I was going through and I was wanting to go through and um in fact we'll cut to the chase. Rather than the the EduQuest comment devices, and there's there's some entries in here that are really um interesting from the aspect of uh I know that they're input from even people that are on the Facebook groups of like Chris Esh. Um that XT IDE card and figuring out how that went through and um, reacted, um, you know, or how it runs on a, a, um, an EduQuest. There's, there's some interesting instruction. I will just rather, I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase a little bit more. And I may have to go through. So I'm going to bring up the EduQuest 30. And we're going to get looking at some of the stuff that I brought in. So the specifications for the EduQuest 30. And this is the um, this is the lowest end EduQuest model. Now with the EduQuest models, there is um, the convention of the model numbers are spelled out. EduQuest 30, uh, they have the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, and the 55. And there are some other um, releases within that of, of the levels as, as well. Uh, some CS identifiers. As I say, a lot of the content here on the EduQuest is from UXW Bill on YouTube, William Walsh, and um, as it's identified here, the you know and and uh, Thomas has links back to William's original content. We're we're not trying to steal the show here or or anything else. All we're doing is going through and trying to keep pace with a little bit of updates as we go through and more information gets known about these units. Um. It does identify that it is a um, that it's a 386 SLC 25 uh, CPU, and that's of course an IBM CPU uh, that they pr produced in Burlington, Burlington, Vermont. Um, and there's the uh, the picture of the the planer. We'll get looking at this in just a moment. Um, there isn't actually too much component identifiers below that. And certainly, you know, I put up the link before. You can you can pull up that link and drill down to the Mall 30 page that we're looking at. Um, and I'll, I'll bring up a unit here in just a moment, or actually a couple units. Um, but I just want to look look over these uh, these diagrams and. Even a few of the mistakes that I um, was making with them. In fact, I'm going to hide the interaction. In fact, let me go through. I'm going to hide the uh, browser capture. And I probably don't need to hide my internal webcam for, well, let's go through and do that. So in within the last... Um, Range and and there's no hard and fast rule that I that I want to go through and necessarily um, quit the stream at just an hour. We'll go through for the allotted time, but I wanted to go through and all the stack that I have behind me here is that and I've got some trays pulled out of these units. The EduQuest is a lot neater than uh, the Mall Twenty Five. Model 25, as, as explained in that other video, you put it, you know, CRT down, CRT face down on like a towel of your bench, and you you drop the tray, it, it rotates down, and it's not an easy way to go through and to 
troubleshoot it or anything else to be able to view that screen um from you know working on everything else like that to see if the unit comes up what i want to do here is to the display the main display assembly here i'm going to just actually set that off to the side and that's still even quite heavy you know there's the front of it i do need to clean up this unit a little bit more uh it's got the the badge edge quest 30 and some of these and i just in this grand scheme of things, I realized that I would go through and have to, I've got some pretty sad units here. Um, let's go through and we can probably stack, well, we'll bring up this one. It's ultimately, um, I wanted to bring out these sad cases a little bit more. Now, what I've been going through, through and doing as well in kind of the restoration the plastic pieces that these have and this is even visible i'll have to look through for this one um there's a clip that goes up here in fact i can bring this closer and you can see all the a little bit of the uh, oh yeah here i've got the clip you can see a little bit of the uh, these units, and and by all means, the dust and everything else. These can be cleaned up. Now, on top here is the Ethernet adapter, and that's why you know looking in from the side, this actually has the so the hard drive is down here. These these tray latches are really nice because they um you can pull the tray out the back and then you just release the latches on either side and that plastic is doing pretty good okay so there's your speaker your audio thing on the front of course a diskette drive and then the panel if you had um a cd-rom and the interesting thing is i have some EduQuest 30s that they have as i showed on video they have a tape drive in there and I'm trying to figure out how the tape drive interacts into the um, the notion of, you know, I'll bring up the unit that has the tape drive here at the end. It's about the cleanest unit. Um, so I, I just have to figure out how that tape drive plays into the I-class side. But you see these plastic, and that plastic here that's for the the power supply connector it's a strain relief but you're starting to see these plastics are cracking and i went through on this and i pulled out my plastic glue and at least for this level yeah you know, i don't know i'm not really a chemical guy on the my plastics the polycarbonate or where they normally i don't know how they normally uh Describe plastics, but at least for these plastics, they're able to be, it's a later generation, it's able to be glued. So I've gone through and I've glued that assembly. What I see here on the sides, and I went through and I glued this one. This is the unit. Um, this is the piece that was on the, the cleaner unit that I have down here. But these plastic pieces, and this would go over here, and it is where um, these have just basically popped. That plastic ring has popped off. It's these plastics are being are brittle enough at this point that this thing just broke off. And I'm going through and I'm gluing back these plastic pieces. Now, and we'll show this one. It, as I say, it's dirty, but I'll get to the other one as well. Now, this has, and it has the BIOS ROM there. And by the labeling of the other spot 
I was assuming, and it's not really, I'm trying to see if it's able to be identified there. So I thought that this was the the space for the for the um, the DOS in ROM module. You'll have some edge requests that had the PC DOS version. I think it was version five at that point. That was in a an EEPROM chip, and typically a mask EEPROM. Um, that was. You know, you couldn't go through and erase the contents or anything like that for the mass EPROMs uh, that you could have on these edge requests so that they could go through and um, uh, and boot from MS DOS, or I mean, excuse me, PC DOS, the IBM version, from uh, an EPROM on the on the uh, chip. And I just want to go through, and I want to show a, a few of the other items. Uh, that really stood out at me. You have the feature connector um, for the display, and this is actually an ATI chip that is there. I'm going to go through, and I'm I'll be able to identify. And again, that's you know labeled as Japan, but it's an ATI chip. And then there's your feature connector. And then you have VRAM, it's even there. And I want people to see, and this will be a little bit more evident with the other ones. These things are, are so modular in how they're constructed um, that, you know, I wanna show that the, just like the MOL 25 has, how that PCB and how there's a slot for a ribbon cable you know, to these things. Now, the Japanese, there are some even um, Japanese equivalents of the EduQuest series that um, are very similar, that they have boards that link, link into these feature connectors and everything else that span the video. I'd be interested if there's... Um, if uh, there's EduQuest out there that have adapters in there that link into that feature connector. The other thing I saw for all that was that there's that matrix there for the, for the IBM part numbers and FRUs, and you have whether it's marked whether there's one megabyte of memory soldered on the planer or four megabyte of memory. And mine are marked, all my 30s are marked with the four megabyte. Um, so they have four megabyte that's soldered to the planer, a lot like the like the 25SX, because the SIM slots are empty, 30 pin SIM slots. And that's probably relatively conventional memory. That's probably uh, non-parity memory that IBM came out with for like the value point stuff. Um, now the actual, um, four megabyte of RAM is actually down beneath the uh, diskette drive. It's soldered over on the planer over here. You can see the the 386 SLC 25 megahertz CPU is under that heat sink. And uh, William didn't go through and do the models of the um, the 35, the EduQuest 35, and the EduQuest 35 differs from the 30 primarily that it seems to have a uh, an IBM 486 SLC2 50 megahertz CPU on it, and I think they just swapped out the, you know, they soldered in the the uh, 486 SLC2 CPU in place of that 386 SLC CPU. And so that is a good view of the one side of the planer. And as I say, I'm gluing these things back together and well, let's set that down the side. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna, uh, I've got the ethernet adapter out. I'm actually gonna go through and 
after this live stream, I'm going to start, um, I'll go through and start reading some of these EPROMs. I want to read the uh, rip the Ripple ROM. And this is actually a D-Link uh, adapter, as I said in the, in the kind of the, the preview for the uh, live stream that um, the, uh, I'll go through and start reading those. I'll, I'll show the, um, a little bit of the M-Wave card that's uh, uh, below here too. And that has its own little aspects as well. So what I want to do is I want to bring up this. Um, this is rather sad here for uh, the systems I have. That it's got rust um, probably from being stored away in my basement. I maybe had, had this tray pulled out. I've got to go through and got to clean. And, of course, some of the viewers might say, yeah, that's not even all that much rust or anything else. Um, but it's it's disconcerting to me um, for that. And I've pulled the adapters on this one. I can show the other side, basically, of things. There's the M-Wave adapter, and that's documented on Williams. And I sent William actually some some um, some of the the um, boards and everything else, and the risers. I have I have actually a whole bunch of spare risers, and I have the um, the audio connection style. And these almost are like the Ultimedia style of how they're, you know, they have the front panel controls, the volume control and all that. But I went through, that's the, that's the M-Wave DSP. And, you know, and IBM had these on the Aptiva things. They had the Dolphin and the Stingray M-Wave boards, sound cards, and they, since that's a DSP, it really was, uh, you know, had some detractors out there that, you know, that didn't like the uh, the audio from these these uh, adapters that were, you know, they just thought it was. Uh... But you can you can have drivers and everything else for these. These are nice enough audio as it is, and they've got a whole bunch of inputs otherwise. But I pulled the 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 adapters to kind of show this other side. That, for one, what stands out at you is that Dallas module. In this case, it's a benchmark. But I was trying to remember last night, hey, did I see where you could put a, um, you could put the uh, CR2032 battery in there or anything else like that on the riser. And, and then when I looked and I saw that, I thought, oh, that's a, Another of the real-time clock modules that I'll have to modify. And it's got a key. looks like a, that green is a uh, keyboard fuse that's in there. But this um, keyboard controller, and of course, that's marked with an IBM information there as far as version and everything like that. And then I wanted to show the other side. Look at the, those EPROMs there. And I don't know if this is kind of like a modular thing. Um, so they have the IBM Corporation 1993 ROM DOS 1. And then they have the U47, the ROM disk. And then they have all these copyrights on them of the IBM Corporation. Um, so this ROM DOS is. Um, Ultimately, you know, since it has the Microsoft information as well, uh, in addition to the IBM, I mean, this is effectively the DOS on that chip to the left. And then the this ROM disk has IBM Corporation, Phoenix Technologies, Microsoft Corporation, and in, in fact, it's funny, Future Domain Corporation. And then... So on the other side of this, and this is kind of in, in sad shape, I'll have to go through and clean this. There's a, the future domain controller, SCSI controller. And you see that SCSI cable that feeds down through the slot. This is obviously for attaching a internal CD-ROM on the SCSI. But then you have the, the EEPROM there 
for the for the um and i i'm trying to think of what these were um these were like the um the future domain identification of these 8-bit SCSI adapters uh but i'll go through and i'll pull those from so i thought it was interesting for the future domain labeling here on this one of also this other eprom having a future domain copyright and of course future domain is uh is under Adaptech now. But then there's the external SCSI connector. And, um, you know, that that DB25 looking rusty. I'm, I include all the dust so everybody could see uh, what shape this unit is in. I've got to start working with these and cleaning them up. And I'd like to, uh, even on one of these that I've got, it's in very poor condition. I can probably pull the planer and even look at start um, um, gain information on the um, the chips and everything else with the planer. And you see on this one, you know that's the there's a diskette drive connector, and then how these you see how these um, these power connections are. There's the lead for the um, the M wave. It takes it up to the front of the case, but these power connectors that are on every point for e for every drive for the diskette drive for that one, uh, this the second one from the the left it goes down to like the CD ROM area, so you could have that internal CD ROM, and then the one for on the right there, to the right of the ID connection for the hard drive is for the, the hard drive there. So very uh, modular. In fact, even for this one, look on, I just noticed that. And I don't know if it's that way by design or not. You look at that crystal in there. It's a 12 megahertz crystal, but look how it's lifted and soldered in there that way. Isn't that wild? But yeah, I got to go through and clean. And I got to go through and start imaging some of these things. But this looks like, for, for all that, that this has that um, Dawson ROM. And I should be able to, with the once I upgrade the chip or pull out a chip that I've modified to that real-time clock chip, I should be able to get something to boot. Um. And the last one I wanted to pull out, and this is the one I worked with and had around last night. And this has got, like say, that tape drive. So I have to figure out how that fits in in the iClass world. Um, but it has that cabling that goes to the to the diskette drive. And then the other side, and this is kind of like arranged like the Mole 30 had for its diskette drive connector. The B side of that um, goes down below for that that tape drive, and it this is giving me errors about the the you know what is attached for for drive B that tape drive not uh, being configured correctly, and I've gone this is the one I've gone through and I've pulled the LAN adapter and I've got the uh, the sound card that's. It's there, and this one is, I mean, it still needs to be cleaned up, but it's in pretty good shape. But it looks like that it does have the the DOS and ROM and things like that below that. I was assuming that I didn't have that look at these models because I thought that was going to be in the 40-pin um, EEPROM that was in that socket, if it was present at all. And so... I'll get putting these back together. I've glued all these, the the strain relief for the power adapter. I've got that glued back together. I'll be putting that back in place, be screwing this back in place for the adapter guide on this unit. And I can work after I get a, a Dallas module modified to uh, to boot this unit and see if I can go through and boot from the... Um, The DOS that's on that EEPROM chip to kind of get things 
moved around if I can. I'm going to go through. I'm going to be wrapping up the stream soon enough here, of course. I got to get around and see if anybody's chatted much on. And this is what I'm up against, too, a little bit to where I've had books, you know, that were stored away. This bottom one is the Microsoft Visual Basic for DOS, the Programmer's Guide. And then I have um, this Teach Yourself Visual C++. These are, you know, they were on arranged and then they're dirty on the top, of course, because they got the dust where they were stored. They don't, they're actually in better shape because, um, I mean, I'm able to get in and this is still a very functional book, even though I have to be careful as I go through. And that was the horror story of this this level of the Microsoft books um, for that era, is when they got damp, they absolutely just mulch down. And it actually is where these are effectively glued, you know, together for um for it gain a little bit of moisture these 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 microsoft books <laughs> went through and uh they just the the paper started getting uh pulping down of how it was made and i'll have to go through and separate these um sorry for bump bumping the microphone there i'll have to get to and separate these to get uh to where I can uh, utilize that book. I just thought that was kind of fitting for that book being um, the um, the DOS, the vi uh, Visual Basic for DOS being rather appropriate for the uh, for the month of December here. And yeah, okay, I see that you're saying that you sent me an email. Um, that's great, Sean. I know that I've really um, uh, lagged behind in particular on that base camp stuff that I've got. I go through and pay for that every month. And um, so I look forward to reading that email. Uh, I don't really see, I haven't been tracking otherwise of how people have been following along with the streams or anything like that. Uh, YouTube's telling me that the stream is healthy. I've got an excellent connection. So that is uh, is is great. Wow! I, and the concurrent views. So it looks like I I did have pretty good viewership and everything else. I'll go through at a later point. Um, I'm 15 minutes past, so ultimately I've had things going for an hour and a half here uh, with the with the lead in the intro and um um. So it, um, like I say, I'm not really necessarily holding this to an hour. And I was great for that rescheduled, um, dropping this over to the Sunday to not interrupt with people's Christmases and stuff like that. And, um, of course, next week I'll go back to my uh, regular schedule. That'll be, um, um, if Christmas falls on a particular weekday, I think uh, the first falls on a particular weekday as well. I think that's the first. It's next Saturday, the first. Yeah, next Saturday is the first of 2012. So, uh, 2012, 2022. So, um, we'll have a chance for a uh, stream. Uh, Next Saturday would be a New Year's uh, stream, the first of the year. I'll return to my Saturday schedule, and I'll have an opening stream. Uh, that'll be leaving the month of December behind. And um, I look forward to having people on that stream as well. Um, yeah, and really, it's funny for YouTube the way that they... Um, they go through and to see the analytics that on my side, 
uh, showing the concurrent viewers and they show the view time and they show the amount of uh, of viewers. It really is a strange. Uh, it really is a strange arrangement that uh, is out there, and I've had it peak. It looks like at eight viewers just for an absolute moment. Um, in fact, I should screen capture all that. Yeah. And um, just to just to see, it looked like that my average is around four concurrent viewers, but YouTube is start is hard to um, it's hard to interpret sometimes for the analytics. Um, yeah, Sean, if you want to start streaming, um, I talk about for the, the YouTube side, you want to if you have intent out there to get a channel started. And remember, I've always said that I, I'm in the YouTube channel. I, I went and set up primarily because I wanted to um to to get um to fill a void a little bit, I think that was um that I was seen with um with William getting busy and the UXW Bill on his channel. You know that that content, uh, excellent content. Um, I do a video on something, and I I look, and he's done a video on that system nine years before this. But I want to say for YouTube, if you want to get a YouTube channel started, get it going. Just throw a few videos up, just get it in motion, because getting subscribers takes time. It, it you know, uh, that'll just it it. The longer you have that channel up, you'll gain subscribers and get up to the point um, to where more people see your videos. Jump in. And I, I, as I said earlier, I need to get streaming more, live streaming more on the Twitch side, too. Uh, there's some very good um, content and people that are that are doing that aspect, and I need to... Uh, to look at that. I've always talked about where I do the, the live streams on the Facebook side too. I don't know. Facebook is good for groups and stuff like that. Good meeting places, but um, that social side, but really for all that, for the live streaming, I I just don't know. I, I don't like that interface. So, but I, I did enjoy this one. I, I, I'm grateful that my wireless mic seems like it behaved um, well enough. I'm getting all my chimes for YouTube finally giving me notifications, pushing through stuff. Um, I'm glad that the wireless headset went through and, and performed well enough seemingly. And it's been comfortable, allowed me to move around and things like that without being on that cord constraint. And I didn't have to use it, but that effectively the cough switch where I could raise the boom. Yeah, and, and I haven't tried streaming on Twitch. I've got an account set up on Twitch, and I'm just aware of some, you know, content out there. Like I said, Tube Time US, uh, he has a Twitch channel, um, and he deleted that. MCGA graphics chip was the one thing that I watched. Um, although I'm not really uh, where I sit down and just watch live streams. In particular, I know that the gaming live stream aspect, and Mike has started, uh, Mike's Mac Shack has started up where he does a streaming as he goes through and uh, does all games and everything else. And that would be more interesting to me to watching those older games with somebody going through and doing Minecraft or all the other stuff. I mean, my, my granddaughter's interested in watching all that stuff, the, the modern gaming side. And I know that there's um, first-person shooter uh, live streaming and stuff like that. And that, that stuff just doesn't interest me at all. Um, you know, I'm not going to say I lived it, but, I mean, for, certainly for... Um, the aspects that I've done in my life, I, you know, I, it's the same as I'm not going to be playing Minesweeper on um, Windows 3.1. You know, they had that that uh, integrated game that was released with Windows 3.1. Uh, 
And I don't know if Minesweeper came out in 3.1 or 3.11 or whatever, but it was with Reversi and the Solitaire. It was one of the included games. And Minesweeper, it's fun. I mean, I've tried my hand at it a couple of times. So I did that stuff in real life. <laughs> I don't want to go back and have the, the memories of uh, of that stuff. And at least when I get blown up there, I got another life or whatever else. Um, that it's a, an easier thing, that unreality aspect of it. The other, um, for social media side, okay, so you're asking what is my Facebook? And I actually have a Facebook group set up for um, the, my channel. It's supposed to be just for promoting my content. I want to go through and I want to, every video I produce, I want to put it there. And I actually want to get some dialogue back from people on how my channel's doing or content that they want to see. Um, let me see if I can go through and... Um, so the... And what I'll do is I'll link my channel, Sean, because I, I knew you were on... Okay, is it a dash? I'm trying to go through and give you enough of a, because I know you're on some of the, the, the groups that we have on Facebook. The other side of things uh, that I want to provide for people, in fact, I can do it this way. I'll go to my groups. Okay, and I could have just put a groups in there. So this is my this is my Facebook group link um, that I do for the purpose of my channel, and um, then I can provide links from there on what the SIF News Group and the other Facebook groups of the PS2 groups are. This EduQuest content gets thrown into. Um, gets thrown into the Mall 25 and Mall 30 group a lot of the time. And that has a little bit of overflow, even on the main PS2 group that is supposed to be focused on mainly the, the microchannel aspects. Uh, it does have some overflow of some other systems, um, which is fine. And, um, and th that's fine catching streams at the end. You can always see this in playback. You know, it'll be up there. And uh, happy eeping day to you, too. Um, <laughs> thank you. I'll, I'll probably see the, uh, the request. And I have to put up questions because um, to, to kind of screen for content on that because um, to make people um, familiar with um, – okay, and I'll prove that guy, too. I think there's somebody else that went through and joined. Um, I'll have to uh, to go through there and uh, kind of fill in some videos and things like that and, and give some links on that uh, group that are helpful for kind of where I'm at. So as a closing remark, and let's go, I'll go to an hour and a half of effectively the the, the true streaming content that I've done. I know I got off to a kind of a slow start, a lot of talk and everything else. My voice is starting to get a little bit raspy now. Um, but the other social media, surprisingly enough, that I've been watching a lot of time and I get notifications on um, is Twitter, believe it or not. Um, and Twitter has become a little bit more of a, pleasant place for me <laughs> as of late uh, than it was before. And I go through and uh, Tube Time US is there. Um, Ken Schultz, I go through and um, uh, and here's what I can do. The last um, aspect to this, in fact, let me bring it up on a side screen. 
Now, I actually want to go through and I want to rework this page a little bit. Um, and, and my site is case sensitive for any of the sub directories. Here's the easier way for me to do things is I have a links page out there. And there it is. Um, that gives you all the l effective links that um, of where I'm at out there. And then I even have one of those link site subscriptions. And that's kind of nice a lot of the time that it goes through and um, it prompts people to become Patreons and things like that right up front. Or even I think in the YouTube channel, it makes it ask you if you want to subscribe that you have to click out and that's a big thing with gaining subscribers on youtube is you want people will go through and they watch videos they watch your videos but they're not inclined to subscribe as much and they're not of course inclined to do any of the patreon aspects um and i'll try and go through and accent those i have an excellent guide in uh retro tech chris and you know, guiding me how uh, I can go through and things I need to add and all that. Um, but um, the links page, that's a good place uh, for me to offer out there. I go through and I carry around the cards. Um, I'll take these. So, and I know it's a little bit late to schedule, but I do plan on being in Dallas. Um, less than a month away uh it's going to be on the saturday january 22nd of 2022 i'll be at computer reset in the afternoon and i'm hoping to meet um and a little bit of smoothing with uh lgr clint from lgr is going to be there and um yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to that comment, but I'm I'm going to be down there, um, and I'll go through and and pay the door fee uh, for computer reset. The the I I think it's very good the the protocols that they have set up now, and hopefully, the world won't be a, a, as a crazy of place. Um, in that, by the time we get to that, um, hopefully it'll be good weather for January. But a lot of people are aware of Computer Reset by Clint going down there and having a video. And it's actually the first video on my uh, Watch Later list. I haven't gone through and pulled it off of my Watch Later. Uh, I should go through and, and do that at some point. Um, but um, uh, going through, and I know... And I know Clint, the, the main reason I want to talk to him is I know that he has a, a uh, rough relationship with PS2s, uh, in particular the microchannel PS2s. And I realize that's for a reason. I mean, he's he's a gamer. Um, microchannel's not known for having the sound cards back in the day. Uh, not, you know, they're business machines a lot of the time. Uh, I can understand how he doesn't relate to that. It's a little bit different of a um, of thing, but I hope to talk to him a little bit and maybe the, um, you know, for the IBM aspect that he touches on, um, it's always getting the larger channels to recognize the smaller ones on YouTube too and a chance for collaboration. The last thing I'm going to do before, as I go through and wrap up the stream, I'm, I'm working on collaboration with uh, Curious Mark still. I sent him the uh, Bermuda planers, even you know the damaged one that uh, went through that Eric was not able to get uh, running successfully. He repaired a lot of the damage I did on the planer in pulling the SCSI microcode. Um, but I'm going through and there's going to be a collaboration with Curious Mark. They're trying to get that PS2 Mall 77 set up and they have a what's called a um, channel emulation board uh, for the the uh, 
T three seventy adapter. And um for the channel adapter, the channel emulator, they have to have the 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 processor card for that as well. And I have one of those. I'm gonna go through and put a uh that out on loan to them. I'll have to get some RAM for it. I've got still the adapter here, but I'm looking forward to that in this next year of working through a collaboration with them. I, I don't know if I can go through and reach where I have that. Oh yeah, I can. Just try not to knock down things. And I have it in the and a static bag. Uh, but this uh, board of going through and and uh, at least this time I have audio. Uh, I know before when I was doing that one stream to show that I had the adapter to somebody. Um, that glorious um, appearance, and this is the um, the. 370 board allows you to turn your your PS2 into a little bit of a um, mainframe, emulate a mainframe. And I've got to get the RAM memory for that. And even surprisingly for the microdrome, that's you know that's got that's notch for going into a 16 bit micro channel system as well although um as a host but yeah there's the labeling p370 but i i'm going through it's just a little bit of notification i, I expect to do a little bit more collaboration with curious mark on that i know that that'll get me um some subscribers and viewers that are that like his content and he goes through and he works with ken sheriff um hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly sheriff uh for the spelling and everything else that uh ken has but ken has an excellent uh on twitter he he gets into so much neat stuff and uh, the ibm mainframe sort of thing yeah Hi, Chris. <laughs> You're seeing me as just uh, right as I'm getting ready to wrap up my rescheduled stream um, for uh, shifting to a Sunday instead of a Saturday. So I wouldn't interrupt people's Christmases yesterday. I know so I look like, you know, I, I'll get all the jokes about how I look like Santa Claus. I'm, um, you'll see me and Santa Claus in the same place and realize that we're separate persons. Um, <laughs> for all that um but um and i'm reverting i'm telling people i'm reverting back to my uh regular scheduled uh saturday live stream and it will be on the 1st of january that i'll i'll do my next live stream at 10 a.m mountain center time noon eastern center time 11 a.m Central Standard Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but I look forward to getting uh, um, for um, you know, chatting with you otherwise because I I've got to resolve why um the this edge quest I have for getting onto the I class system, I'm certain that Sean and and you know enough about the I class stuff, but it's got that tape drive on it. And I really need to go through and identify how this interface is into uh, the iClass system. That's and that's diskette based. Goes for the B drive connection. Um, it's interesting on you know if that's tape backups for uh, them having the iClass system, but but I have a couple. Um, I have a couple uh, uh, of those mall 30s that I need to go through and and uh, to do. And so I'm going to go through. Um, that'll just have to be to, to watch the uh, 
the the stream in uh, in uh, playback. Um, and of course, the people that want to get down the computer reset, they're planning to actually close out the building in April and wrap things up to where they can sell the building. And um, you know, so it's uh, you if you need to get down there, I'm getting down there late. You need to get down there before April. Uh, before they they go through and close out, and I want to go and see for myself on how uh, cleared out it is so far, uh, different from Clint's video of a couple of years back. But uh, at least these headphones, I didn't have it interrupt. I've got my phone muted, but I did get a call from the boss, uh, my wife. So I've got to go through. I'm going to wrap up the live stream. Hope to see you next week on Saturday. And uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, but I've got to get through and I've got to call back, back my wife and say, uh, okay, uh, what's the honey do? What, what do I, uh, what do I need to attend to? I appreciate seeing you all here, but, uh, that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.